Boy, that's weak out there. You guys must be tired. You must have been sweating today. Must have had a long day at work. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I guess you got enough off of the radio. Praise God. Amen. It's good to be in church, and I thank the Lord. Amen for that. Praise God. Amen. You got to be an example of the believer. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Sister uh, Nieves, don't ever move to Alaska. She's wrapped up over there, man. I tell you what, she looks like she's got her own cocoon there. Just waiting for that butterfly to come out, amen. Praise God. But that butterfly won't come out, amen, unless it struggles a little bit and works its way out. Praise the Lord, amen. Praise God. Want to have prayer for Sister Crudis? Uh, I need uh, Brother Bishop, if you would, let's anoint Sister Brother Hunt. Would you come up and pray? Praise God. Brother Torres, you need to anoint Sister Crudis. She has a... Uh, uh, a doctor's appointment this Friday, and uh, we really need a touch from God. We need a healing from the Lord. We need a good report. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want you to come and anoint my wife. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to let them anoint. I'm not going to anoint her because when I put my hands on her, I don't want to take them off. I love my wife. I appreciate her. Praise God. Amen. In the power of the name of Jesus, by the authority of the word of God, quicken, make alive, heal, deliver, Lord Jesus. Again, cleanse again, Lord. By the power of the blood of Jesus, Lord, we invoke the name that's above every name. In Jesus' name, be ye healed for the glory of God. Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody believe in prayer? Anybody believe that the Lord is well able? Amen. Praise God. I mean, God works uh, by faith. Amen. Hallelujah. He honors faith wherever he can find that. That's why people can get healing all across the land. Amen. But a healing doesn't mean that you're saved. You can have a miracle in your life. You can have some spiritual uh, enrichments, amen, but it doesn't mean that you're saved. That's why you need to know the Bible so you know how to be saved. Praise God, amen, because there are so many different denominations and religions out there today. And I hate to tell you this, amen, the majority, majority of them, amen, just don't have it right. Amen. Anybody that circumvents the book of Acts cannot be saved. I don't care how much you say you believe in God. There's a plan of salvation. There's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism. You say, you quote that all the time. I'm sorry, but that's in my DNA. There's only one baptism, has two elements, water and spirit. Amen. You must be water baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. The entire book of Acts, amen, revolves around and centered on Acts 4 and 12. For neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. A title does not save you. When I pray for the sick and I pray for people, amen, I, I don't use titles. I go directly to the name that's above every name. I believe it's Philippians 1 and 21. I can't, I can't remember now, praise God. But it's far above all principality and power and dominion and might. The name that's above every name. Things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth are going to bow before that name. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I'm glad, amen, to have that revelation and that truth of the power of the name of Jesus Christ. If you have not been baptized in Jesus' name, you are not ready to make the rapture. Nobody is saved without water baptism in Jesus' name. That's where the blood is applied. That's how your sins are washed away. Now, if you want chapter and verse, amen, we'll give you a Bible study. Praise God, amen. Now, I realize, amen, I'm preaching to the choir tonight. But I will tell you this, amen, and all of you should already know this. There's some foundational truths that you should have that should be a bedrock, praise God. In 1 Corinthians 3 and 11 says, For other foundation can no man lay than that that is laid, which is Jesus Christ the Lord. He's our foundation. He's our bedrock. We build everything upon him. Ephesians 2 and 20, we are built upon the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Everything flows from him. 
Amen. Praise God. And there are eternal truths all throughout the Word of God. Precepts, principles, statutes by which God works. Amen? Amen. All His works are done in truth. Everything. Praise God. Amen. This Bible, amen, is the greatest resource you and I have today. If you got money in the bank, amen, thank the Lord. God wants you to be a good steward. If you got a nice home and a nice car, thank the Lord. Amen. God has blessed you. Nothing wrong with having those things. But that car can't save you. That home can't save you. That bank account can't save you. Those CDs, amen, praise God, can't save you. I'm just going to tell you, amen, there's only one plan of salvation. And people, amen, that try to circumvent that, amen, are going to be greatly disappointed when the sound of the trumpet happens. Amen. I want to tell you this. There are people in this church who have not yet seen the revelation nor obeyed, amen, the plan of salvation, amen, that when the trumpet sounds, amen, they will be left behind. And I'm going to tell you, then it's too late. It's too late. Amen. The Bible says, as a tree falleth, whether to the north or to the south, there shall it lie, as found in Ecclesiastes. What he's saying is, when you leave this world, amen, by death, okay, you pass from this life, amen, praise God. The greatest fear, amen, is not physical death. It's spiritual death. And if you're only born once, you mean, you're going to die twice. But if you have been born again, if you are born twice, born again of the water and of the Spirit, you're only going to die once. Well, I'll, I'll quote it. Revelation 20 and 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection of such the second death, the death of judgment, white throne judgment, hath no power over you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. All right, let's go to the word of the Lord tonight. I appreciate those of you that are here. Uh, again, I hope, amen, that the pools are listening. Happy anniversary to you. Uh, Brother Clayton, I am so sorry that you are sick. Amen. But better you than me tonight. But I am praying that God heals that throat. Amen. Immediately tonight. God can touch that throat. God can heal, amen, praise God, right now, amen. I remember Sister Torsey had strep throat. She was a young girl, Sister Crudis. I don't remember how old she was, but she was young enough to not know better. <laughs> she was about six or seven, amen, and our house was under construction. We'd already moved in, but they weren't through with the cabinets. They weren't through with some of the painting. And Brother Notgrass, who was uh, one of our uh, licensed ministers and pastor at a church in a neighboring town. He was one of the men that was doing the construction on the house. And Sister Torsey had strep throat. She had it very, very bad. And so she told Sister Crudis, she said, if Brother Notgrass will pray for me, God will heal me. She's six, seven years old. So when he gets there to start working on the cabinets, Sister Crudis goes up to him and says, hey, my daughter wants you to pray for her. She says, when you pray for her, she's going to get healed. So he's Praise a simple prayer in the name of Jesus. He goes back to working on cabinets, amen. And Sister Janessa turns around and says, Mama, I want some fried chicken. And she said, Honey, you can't eat fried chicken. You got strep throat. She goes, God healed me. And Lord, if she didn't eat us out of house and home after that. But God did heal her, and she ate fried chicken. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, she's not a good Pentecost. I can tell you that right now. When she was growing up and everything, don't leave Oreos around. Amen. I, remember, I remember going to the cupboard and getting some Oreos because I'd like to have them with my glass of milk. And I pulled a handful out, and the first one didn't have no cream in between the two layers. The second one didn't have it. At first, I thought, man, they messed up on this batch. And then I realized the rest of them were like that. And I called her front and center. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I do believe in discipline. You don't mess with the pastor's Oreos. I mean, I'm like, don't put them back in the bag. I actually had to do this. I realize, amen, I'm a little comical right now, but I actually had to do this. A candy bar that I wanted for later was not safe in our fridge because my kids would see it and they would eat it. And so I honestly did this. I went in there looking for it. It's gone. So I honestly did this. I went and bought me a candy bar, and I unwrapped the top of it, and I pulled the kids in there, and I said, now watch. And I licked it all over and wrapped it up, put it back in the fridge. I said, now you know it's mine. <laughs> and it was there when I wanted it. <laughs> Woo. All right, let's go to the word of the Lord. 
Matthew chapter 11. Praise the Lord. I'm just staying saved. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Some things, amen, you just got to, you got to go the extreme, amen, to keep your kids from getting what you want. You know, teeth prints, amen, praise God, go a long ways. Praise the Lord. All right. Nothing new under the sun, amen. I want to talk to us, amen, something I felt from the Lord today. Praise God, amen. Hallelujah. In uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 1, and it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. I want you to turn to verse 18. We're skipping a lot in here. Praise God. No, let's go to verse 16. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? So now he's bringing it down to us. There's some things that happened during the days of Jesus. He's talking about this generation that you and I now are living in. It's like unto children sitting in the markets calling unto their fellows and saying, We have piped unto you, and you have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and you have not lamented. Somebody say repented. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And then he goes into this deal about John came neither eating nor drinking, and they said that he had a devil. And then the Son of Man, Jesus, came eating and drinking. They said that he was a gluttonous man and a wine bibber. Called him many things, friend of publicans. I'm so glad he is a friend of all friends. Praise God. Then we pick up in verse 20. Then began he to upbraid the cities. Notice, amen, he commands his disciples, and then he goes into all the cities to teach. That's imperative that we understand that. And so there's a discourse that's happening, amen, but there's time that has elapsed. And so now he's gone into the cities, and he has preached, and he has taught, amen. And there are three cities here, amen, that are mentioned. So we pick it up in verse 1. He says, well, let's read 20 again. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Chorazin. Woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Do you understand what Jesus is saying? Okay, verse 22, he goes a little further. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which are exalted unto heaven, shalt be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. Man. I want, to, I want to talk to us a little bit tonight, again, the cities of shame. Three cities that bring shame to the ministry of Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Our reading tonight is, is one that evokes, I feel, a very great concern because it defies logic and reason. It speaks of whole cities being lost Entire communities being lost. It's not only alarming, but it is very, very terrifying. Three cities that had the greatest of opportunity and privilege. Three cities, amen, that were blessed in every way. They had the best of the best. They had the most of the most. And yet, in these three cities, they are marked with shame and contempt. All three are named, amen, they're not hidden from us. And with each, there is a terrible woe that is pronounced. Jesus begins to talk to one city and says, Woe unto thee, Chorazin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida. And then he picks up the third city of shame is, Woe unto thee, Capernaum. And each were blessed, amen, and mightily blessed with the works and the ministries of God. When you read that, it tells us that Jesus began to do works there. It says, amen, that uh, mighty works were done, but they failed to repent and obey the word of God. Now, these were cities, amen, praise God, amen, that we cannot afford, amen, to be like. These are cities of shame. They heard the word of God, amen. They saw the works of God, but they did not, amen, obey the word of God. They did not repent. According to Matthew 11 and verse number 5, it says, The blind saw, the lame walked, the lepers were cleansed, and the deaf were hearing, and the dead were raised from the dead. And he said, And the gospel was preached 
unto them. Each one of these three cities had this privilege. They had exceptional testimonies to the power of God. Miracles were done. Healings took place. Amen. The blind saw. The deaf heard. The lame walked. The lepers cleansed. Again, I'm not trying to be redundant, but I'm trying to bring us to a, an understanding that we can be in the midst, amen, of the miracle working power of God. We can be in the midst, amen, of a spiritual move of the Lord, amen, and yet be untouched. Amen. Praise God. There were exceptional blessings of the goodness of God. The phenomenal, the remarkable, and even the unthinkable works of God, amen, were taking place in their cities. Amen. When I said the unthinkable, sometimes, amen, God goes beyond, amen, our imagination or our thought process. God does things, amen, that we have never seen done before. Amen. He did it with us. Amen. We never saw it like this before. The scripture says they never heard a man speak like this before. Jesus amazed, amen, the countryside. Jesus, amen, was the miracle worker. He was the mighty sea walker, the blinded eye opener, amen, the bread multiplier. He had bread, amen, just multiplying out of his hands. And people, amen, they loved him in the feedings, amen, but they did not honor his word. We know the story. We know the accounts in the word of the Lord. Every one of these three cities had a visitation of the supernatural. We love it in this church. When God steps in, amen, and God shows himself, Amen. Mighty and strong. Amen. We love it when the Spirit of the Lord just kind of heightens him in the service. And before you know it, amen, we see things begin to take place. One would even think tonight that they would excel and flourish, amen, after God and the things of God. That faith, amen, would be surprisingly high, amen, and not low. That their belief, amen, would be of the utmost and paramount, amen. Praise the Lord. But we see something different in the reading of the scriptures tonight. The people, amen, uh, that uh, are hearing Jesus preach, amen, and seeing the works of the Lord are not what I call Jesus friendly. They are more hostile than they are hospitable, amen. The word of the Lord, amen, praise God, seems, amen, to have more neglect than anything else. They're not listening. They're not receiving, amen. It's one thing, amen, for the Lord to bless you. It's another thing for you to bless the Lord. It's one thing for the Lord to touch you. It's another thing for you to touch the Lord. Amen. And I want us to understand, amen, how this works. Praise God. Amen. These people, amen, rejected, amen, the words of Jesus. In our text of Matthew 11 and 20, it says, then began he to abrade or to revile the cities wherein most of his works were done because they repented not. They would not hearken to the voice of scripture. They refused to turn from wrong to right. They left off and left out, amen, the very things of God. Just simply put, they did not want the truth of God. Now, I want to tell you this, amen, at the onset. I want to tell you there are people today, and we wonder, why aren't they seeing? How come they're not getting this? How come they're not responding, amen? I'm here to tell you, some of them are blinded. We know that. It says the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, amen, and they're the problem, those that believe not. We have some people, amen, that don't want to hear the truth. Some people that don't want the whole truth, amen. They want just, amen, the portion, amen, that agrees with them, their way of thinking, amen, their line of thought, amen. That's why we have so many different religions today, because somebody, amen, came up with a new opinion and a new thought, amen, and they overrode the word of God. Remember I said before, amen, that uh, how did this denomination get here? How did this organization? organization start. If you go back to the beginning, amen, during the church age, the beginning of the church, it started out apostolic before long, amen, it became Catholic. The church of Ephesus in, in Revelations chapter 2, if you read church history, they had left their first love and they ended up becoming not apostolic, they became the Catholic church. There were many things, amen, that began to be dropped, amen, it was a break off of a break off to the point, amen, where everything became broken. You ought to thank God, amen, that there is still an apostolic Pentecost Pentecostal church here tonight, amen, that still believes in the things of God. And we're not trying to be a counterfeit. We're not to be a lookalike, amen. We want to be Jesus' name completely, amen. 
Praise God, amen. Please hear what I'm trying to tell you. They just didn't want the truth. And I find a parallel, amen, today, both within and without the church. There are those, whether they be cities or whether they be individuals or whether they be churches who do not want the whole of truth. You would be amazed today at some of the ministers that I have talked to and tried to show them the things of God and watch them take their Bible and slam it in my face and say, I don't want to hear that. I will not receive that. Amen. And that happens, amen, today. Even though you're trying to help them, you want to save their soul. You want to save and help them, amen, from the error of the way. The Bible says in James 5 and 19, brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he that converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Amen. We're not there, praise God, amen, to hurt them. We're there to help them, but some of them just don't want the whole truth. I'm going to wait on you, praise God. No matter, amen, how much or how often God even visits certain people and certain places, amen, they will not turn and repent of their sins. There's no godly sorrow, amen, and they continue to live and to act, amen, as before. God moves unprecedented all across this world, amen. The presence of the Lord knows no bounds, amen. Praise God. I believe that he has visited every church, every denomination, every home, every organization. Praise the Lord, amen. Praise God. I believe that God, amen, is not willing that any should perish. And God, amen, has no boundaries, amen, when it comes to the love of God. The height, the breadth, the length, and the width of his love, amen, is immeasurable. We need to understand this. That means that even in the Catholic Church, the Lutheran Church, church, the Presbyterian church, the Methodist church, amen, praise God, that God does visit them from time to time. God does, amen, use certain people, amen, in certain ways to try and get his truth across. God can even use a false prophet and bring forth a sign and a wonder and let it come to pass, amen. I'm just trying to tell you, praise God, amen, that God does visit each and every organization and every church somewhere along the line at some time, praise the Lord. And ministers, amen, praise God, God deals with them. He touches, he pricks their hearts, he pulls at their soul, he ministers, even calls them by name, amen, praise the Lord. And yet the people, I've seen it, they will weep and cry under the presence of the Lord, amen, but then they won't repent. And they won't get right with God. It happened to me, amen. I'm going to go back, amen, and tell you. I used to be a part of the Lutheran church, amen. We left the Catholic church and went to the Lutheran church. It's just a break off of Catholicism, amen. Praise God. We would always do what they called the Apostles' Creed, which wasn't the Apostles' Creed. It starts out, I believe, in the Holy Roman Catholic Church. Praise God. Blah, blah, blah. Amen. Praise the Lord. But that doesn't make you Catholic, amen, or that doesn't make you apostolic. Praise God. Amen. What I'm trying to tell you is I was in church, in a Lutheran church, and at that time, amen, I was questioning God. My dad had just recently passed away. I'm a young teenager, amen. Praise the Lord. And I wanted to know, because of the loss of my dad because he was young 46 years of age what he was 41 she says I believe he was 46 but she said 41 years of age that's young to pass from this life and so he had passed on amen and I'm wondering amen questioning in my mind is God real amen and I wanted to know and it was in that service in a Lutheran church and I can't explain it amen but God began to deal with me he began to touch my heart and I began to weep and to cry amen uncontrollably my mother was sitting next to me she looked at me she says what are you doing and I said mom I don't know but this one thing I know amen God amen is present in this place I can feel the touch of his hand, amen, the presence of God. And the only thing my mother could say was, well, hush up, because we don't do that here, amen. Praise the Lord. But my mother, amen, when she began to chide me, amen, there was something that I knew from that moment on, there was a God. It started, amen, uh, me on a quest to find him and to know him, amen. Now, there were a lot of uh, junctures along the way, a lot of pit stops along the way. God sent someone else, amen, to give me another bit of truth and someone else, amen. But the presence of the Lord on that day, amen, I will never, ever forget. God had just seemingly stepped into that place and paid me a visitation, amen, and began to deal with my heart, amen, praise God. Now, I got to tell you, we were not raised that way. We were raised, amen, more stoic, amen. We were not to be moved 
moved, amen, with any type of emotionalism. But I'm telling you on that day, amen, when I began to weep and cry, God was in that house. Amen. Praise God. And here I stand before you tonight, filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in his name, and on my way to heaven, praise the Lord. But this is not the only time that I felt God. So in our text, in Matthew 11 and 20, Jesus began to upbraid those cities because they would not repent. Can I tell you that repentance is needed for everyone? Repentance is needed for the rich and the poor, for the educated, the uneducated, for the church, and for the world. In fact, amen, we need repentance tonight. Amen, praise God. There's not a one of us in here that don't need to repent of something tonight. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Some of us are too lax, amen, when it comes to the winning of the lost, amen. Some of us are too lax when it comes, amen, to the things of God. Some of us are too lax when it comes, amen, to our faithfulness, amen, in the realm of the Spirit of the Lord. I don't know if you're catching what I'm trying to tell you, but we need to learn, amen, to repent, amen. It's a godly sorrow that work of repentance unto salvation. We need to repent. We ought to repent every day. I'll just go on record. We ought to repent every day. Amen. Praise God. Well, I don't have anything to repent of. Well, then you need to repent over that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Three woes, amen, that came forth. Three woes, amen, of judgment. So terrible, they're recorded in the word of God. Isn't it amazing how that Lord, the Lord, amen, gives us, amen, insight into the things of God? He shows the successes, but he also shows the failures. He doesn't hide anything, amen. He shows, amen, our possibilities, and he shows, amen, our mistakes. Praise God. He shows all kinds of things, amen, throughout the word of God. It's to help us, amen, and not to hurt us. The these judgments, amen, were so terrible because it could have and should have been totally different. They should have been cities, amen, that followed after Christ. It should have been people, amen, that thronged after the Lord. They should have obeyed the word of God. Now listen, amen, praise the Lord, I'm going to help us tonight. Praise the Lord. I think we have a great church. I think we have a great uh, staff. I believe we have a great ministry, amen. I believe, amen, that we're not falling short in the preached word of God department. Amen. I believe, amen, that we have a great ministry staff, amen, that can preach the word of God and deliver the truth of God. I'm going to wait on you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sometimes, amen, we've been around this type of preaching for so long, we get to start taking it for granted, amen. I've been in churches, praise the Lord, and I'm not trying to be unkind, but the preacher would get up and you could tell he spent more time, amen, on the um, golf course. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Amen. On the golf course than he did, amen, on, in prayer and study for the word of God. Amen. I'm here to tell you, amen, I've been in some churches where it just seemed like, amen, they just stumbled, amen, they read a scripture. They couldn't explain it nor expound it, amen. And it was, but here we come to the house of God and it can get explosive up here sometimes. In fact, we have dynamic services, amen. We have the truth and revelation being expanded and expounded, amen. We have the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge that's in operation. We have the gift of prophecy. The gift of faith, amen, is in operation. Praise God. And sometimes we've been around it for so long we don't appreciate what we have. We take it for granted, praise God. I'm not trying to be unkind. I'm not trying to build my resume, amen, but I'm trying to tell you there has been a very powerful anointing of the Lord in this church, amen, where the word, amen, had free course. Amen. We can take people for granted. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. We got great musicians and singers. Amen. Praise God that sing and play. Amen. And we get so used, amen, to hearing that good music. Amen. We've forgotten, amen, what bad notes sound like. Hello? Amen. I, I, I'm, I'm being honest with you. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Take a trip sometimes. When you do, make sure you visit some of these other churches because you're going to find out that not all of them have, amen, what you have. Amen. We are blessed. We are blessed with people that love God, that serve the Lord, amen. We're blessed with people that love to worship the Lord, that aren't ashamed, amen, to clap their hands. They're not afraid, amen, to worship God. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes, amen, it's almost like, amen, pulling teeth. Do you not remember, amen, how God brought you out? How that God dealt with your heart, put a preacher in your life, amen, and God, amen, showed you his love and his mercy and his truth, amen. Praise God. If anybody ought to stand to the feet, amen, it ought to be the people of God, amen, that remember their deliverance, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm trying to help us. Amen. Jesus, amen, is going into the cities. He's teaching and he's preaching and there's miracles and there's wonders that are taking place. Praise God. Amen. And these people, amen, did not receive it as such. In fact, they did not repent. Just prior to our text, I didn't read it on purpose, but in Matthew 11, verses 7 through 14, Jesus is actually commending and praising John the Baptist and his ministry. He was a prophet and more than a prophet. But Jesus is telling them, what went you out to see? And among them that are born of women, he said, there is none greater than John. He was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. He was the last of the Old Testament prophets and the first of the New Testament prophets. We still have prophets today. We still have the fivefold ministry today. Whether you want to believe it or not, praise God, amen. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4 and 11, amen, that we have the fivefold ministry. We have apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers, praise God, for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ, which tells us, amen, that the prophetic ministry has not been done away with, amen. There's still prophecy today. There's still the gift of prophecy today. Amen. Some people don't believe that, praise God, amen, but I believe that because it's in the word of God, amen. Praise the Lord. John the Baptist, amen, was sent from God, but he was also mightily used of God. And both John and Jesus had ministered in all three of these cities. And yet the ministry or the ministries of John and Jesus did not profit them. I mean, they had the best of all preachers. They were none the better for it, praise God, amen. In other words, you can have the the best evangelist. You can have the best preacher, praise God, amen, and still have a church, amen, that does not appreciate it. Amen. Praise God. There were healings, miracles, but it made no difference to them. There were signs, there were wonders, and it did not change them. There was Jesus and there was John and it did not profit them. Can you imagine what they had? The preaching, amen, that they received and the works that they had seen, praise God, amen. I mean, you can't get a better preacher than Jesus, the word, preaching the word, praise God, amen, and yet they would not receive it as such, praise God. I'm here to tell you, amen, we're living in a day. We better be very careful. We better appreciate what God has granted and given to us, amen, in this church. Neither John nor Jesus could please them or reach them. I'm going to let that sink, praise God, amen. Hallelujah. I made a statement the other day. It's not the first time I said it. But I made this statement the other day in witnessing to someone, and I said, if God can't save them, I can't. All I can do is preach the word. If they won't hear it and won't receive it, amen, they're going to leave the same way they came. They're going to be always, amen, lost, amen, praise God. But even Jesus, the greatest preacher known to mankind, amen, they still did not receive him nor hear him. Now that ought to help you, praise the Lord, amen, praise God. He was the greatest preacher on earth, amen, praise God, and yet they would not turn and repent. Most churches today couldn't handle a John the Baptist type preacher, amen, but Jesus, he was the friend that sticketh closer than a brother. He's the altogether lovely one. He's the lover of your soul, amen. He's the very captain of your salvation, and still they would not listen to him. John, praise God, amen, I mean to tell you, he was rough amen as rough gets amen he called them hypocrites and vipers amen Jesus was a little more toned down but there were times that Jesus did use the same words and the same vocabulary that Jesus used amen praise God or John used I'm doing the best I can I know where I want to go praise God and yet it did not affect them they did not turn, amen, and repent, praise God. Let me try it again. They had the best of preachers. They had the greatest, amen, of ministers. And neither Jesus nor John could help those three cities or affect those three cities. When I preach, I am often disturbed that so many turn a deaf ear and walk out as though, amen, I'm just up here venting. 
I get frustrated when I see people, amen, when you are talking about salvation and you're talking about, amen, the lover of their soul, Jesus Christ, and they yawn their way through the service. I get frustrated when you're trying, amen, to do your dead level best and to reach their soul and then they somehow they got to get up and walk out, praise God. I'd like to go on record, amen, before the preaching starts, go out during the singing or the worship and do your business. But when the man of God God is in the pulpit and preaching. That's not a time to walk out, amen, because he's preaching to you things concerning your salvation. Hello? Praise the Lord, amen, praise God. I know there's some people, amen, that just can't seem to hold it. The Bible talks about the incontinent. Well, some got it, some didn't. Praise the Lord. Praise God. But even Jesus and John, amen, could not affect these three cities. Amen. And if Jesus and John couldn't reach some, if the best of the best didn't work, it only shows that unbelief is a terrible adversary no matter who your preacher is and how well he preaches. No matter what church you belong to, amen, that some preaching, no matter how well it's preached, amen, can somehow be ineffectual. Hello? Amen. Acts 28 and 24, it said these words. Some believe the thing spoken and some believe not. That's why, amen, certain people will get excited over the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Did you know it encourages me, amen, when you stand to your feet and say, come on, preacher, preach it. Amen. Come, on. come on, preacher, that ain't about right. That's right. Preach it. We used to have a preacher, Brother Greg Godwin. Every time he'd preach, amen, every time I hear him ser- say, uh, uh, in his sermons, amen, he said, I know that's tight, but it's right. <laughs> amen. Praise God, amen. I'm trying to tell you, it doesn't matter, amen. There are some people that are going to believe, and there are some people that just won't believe. No matter how many scriptures, amen, you bring out, no matter how much truth, amen, you show them, praise God, and no matter how gifted the preacher is, some will not believe no matter what. Some preachers are more loud, and some are more quiet. Some preachers are more cheerful, some are less cheerful. Some are more direct, others are indirect. Some use tact, others just attack. (laughs) Some are like James and John, the sons of thunder, and then there's some like Barnabas, amen, the son of consolation. Some people are reached by the preaching of the Old Testament and its laws. Some people are reached by the New Testament and its promises. Some are given to the hard line of preaching, some to the sweet line of preaching. But there are always those who no matter how you preach it, they will not hearken to you. They will not listen, amen, praise God. Whether it's John or Jesus, whether it's Peter or Paul, whether it's Timothy or Titus, praise God. I think Isaiah said it best when he cried in Isaiah 53 and 1, who hath believed our report, praise God, amen. There was a trouble back then, there's a trouble today. Most people don't believe, amen, praise God, when you get, amen, on the doctrine of the word of God. And by the way, amen, doctrine is what defines us. You cannot be saved outside of doctrine. Doctrine, amen, is the teachings of Jesus Christ, praise God. Doctrine, amen, will save your soul if you will listen to it and obey it. That's why Paul wrote, amen, to Timothy in, um, trying to think where it is, no, Thessalonians, to the city of Thessalonica, amen. He said, if you can, if, ah, I'm sorry, going by memory, that's all right, praise God. Uh, It'll come to me here in a little bit, praise the Lord, amen, praise God. Man, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, get verse 16. That's not it. That's not it. He said, till I come. It's verse 13. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13. He said, till I come. He said, give attendance to reading. Whoa. Can I preach for a few moments? I'm I'm nearly out of time. Amen. I don't care if I finish tonight or not. I think it's 1 Thessalonians 4, 13. What does it say? Nope. 2 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. It's somewhere there. But I would not have. No, I still don't want you to be ignorant, brethren. (laughs) 1 Timothy 4.13, let's try that. Man, I'm I'm all over the book tonight. I, I I should have listened to God. But he said, till I come, 
Give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. Huh? Th that's okay. That's all I want. And just a few verses later, he says, he said, for if you will do this, you will save yourself and them that will hear you. Now watch. Till I come, give attendance to reading. Where was that, Sister Crudus? 1 Timothy 4.13. And you're talking about ignorant brethren. Well, this will work. 1 Timothy 4.13. He said, till I come, give attendance to reading. Amen. You need to be reading your Bible on a daily basis. You need to search the scriptures, praise God. Because there's all kinds, amen, of ideas and philosophies and traditions and cultures out there, amen, that if you're not careful, you will be deceived. If you don't know what that Bible says verbatim, amen, you will not make it, praise God. You will be tripped up, amen, through the, the lies and deceit, amen, of your adversary, Satan. Now, let me tell you, praise God, amen, the reason why we're having problems to getting people rooted and grounded is because they're not reading their Bible. When the preacher comes up here and he begins to exhort through reading, exhortation, and doctrine, he starts teaching and preaching, a lot of us don't believe it because we ain't never read it. Well, I think he's just pulling the, the rabbit out of the hat, amen. I think he's just, you know, spoofing right now, praise God. But can I tell you, amen, when you know the Word of God for yourself, amen, and somebody comes, amen, and he tries, amen, to rest the Scriptures and just turn them a little bit, you can say, uh-uh, my friend, that's not how it goes. That's not the Word of God. Amen. If you want to be saved, you better be reading your Bible. I don't care where you start, amen, but the book of Acts is a good place, amen. Thank God for the four Gospels, but you won't find the the plan of salvation in the four gospels. The plan of salvation is in the book of Acts, praise God. It's where the church was birthed, where the church got saved. Amen. amen. Somebody said amen. amen. Praise God. So no matter who your preacher is, some will believe and some will believe not. Amen. Praise God. It doesn't matter how well he preaches. Amen. Some people just don't want the whole truth. Amen. Can I get an amen? Praise the Lord. So what I'm saying tonight, amen, that even the best of preachers, amen, praise God, is not going to reach everybody. There are cities of shame. Do you hear that? God help us. Amen. We know, amen, that there are homes of shame, places of shame, cities of shame, amen, like New Orleans and Mardi Gras or Las Vegas, amen, and Sin City, amen, praise God. And the casinos, amen, praise God. There are some cities, amen, that just have more wickedness and evil that's more pronounced, amen, praise God. But I'm just trying to tell you, amen, there are cities of shame and there are homes of shame and places of shame. God help us, amen. There's also churches of shame. It is a shame to rest the scriptures under your own destruction. It is a shame to deny the word of God. It is a shame not to preach, amen, the whole of truth. It is a shame not to preach the whole counsel of God. It is a shame, amen, to try, amen, and hold back, amen, the truth that God has laid before us. Churches of shame, homes of shame, cities of shame, praise God, amen. Hallelujah. Say amen. So these cities, amen, that Jesus is referring to, amen, they take notice or we give notice, amen, that there are places that just don't receive the word of God like other places do. Have you seen places, amen, perhaps you go to Louisiana, there's some up in Georgia, there's certain hot spots, amen, it's called the Bible Belt, amen. There's certain places and it seems like it's easy, amen, to get someone in ingrained in the word of God and they just seem to kind of grow you know kind of just you know overnight amen praise God it could be amen that it's it's not amen the better preacher it's the better listener amen praise God because we got good preaching here we got good teaching here oh yeah oh yes we do praise God amen I'm here to tell you I preach better than Jimmy Swaggart I'm a whole lot better preacher than Joel Osteen. Yeah. 
You're not hearing me, praise God, but they got crowds, amen, praise the Lord. But when you start preaching the truth, it separates the men from the boys. It brings out people that really love God. Those are the ones that are going to stick, praise God. I'm here to tell you, thank God for a church that's apostolic, amen. We may not be great in number, but we are great in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, this does something for me. This helps me, praise the Lord, because it's a shame when you watch people that you've invested time and money and all kinds of helps, amen, to help them, to get them into the church. And after years, amen, praise God, of help and paying bills and getting them out of jail, amen, and, and paying this and paying that. And then they turn their nose up and walk away, amen. When you read, amen, in the book of John chapter 6, uh, and Jesus Christ, amen, who was the greatest preacher and the greatest physician, amen, who healed, amen, uh, the sick, amen, and cleansed the lepers and opened up the blinded eyes who did blessing upon blessing and wonders upon wonders, amen. And yet in John chapter 6, the Bible said, and they turned and walked with him no more. I'm here to tell you, amen, that does something for me. If they're not going to listen to God, they're not going to listen to you. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Well, Brother Crudis, you just don't say it right. Amen. Praise. I'm doing the best that I can. Praise the Lord. Amen. Pray. I bet I can reach people in Arkansas. <laughs> There's just some people, amen, in some cities, amen, that are receptive to the word of God. I've heard this all my life. That's the Bible belt. That's the Bible belt. Praise God. And I said, dear God, amen. Lord, if we're not in the Bible belt, amen, maybe I need to use the belt. Jesus did that when he walked into the temple, praise God. He had a cord, amen, praise the Lord. I'm just trying to tell you, amen, Jesus knows how to clean the house. Somebody help me now, praise God. Because in this account, amen, God keeps record of the things that were done not only among the people, but for the people. Did you know that God has it on record every time he's talked to you? Every time he's pricked your heart? Every time, amen, he's ministered to you? Do you know he has it on record every time he's blessed you, amen? You ever get a blessing, get a check in the mail, get money, praise God, amen. Get a favor, praise the Lord, amen. God's got that on record. I tried to talk to them. I blessed them, amen. I came to them, and they would not listen. I'm doing the best I can. Praise God, amen. God keeps record, hallelujah, amen. And God is using uh, his, his uh, best abilities, amen, praise God, to reach us and to bring us all to repentance. Jesus says in verse 21 and 22 of our text, Woe unto thee, Chorazin, or Chorazin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago. Now, I don't have a rundown on Tyre and Sidon, but I can tell you they were evil cities. They were bad places, praise God. I'm going to tell you in my reading the other day, I read my Bible. Let me tell you how I know this. I was reading the other day, amen, and Solomon, David had passed on, and Solomon, amen, was finally put in as a king. You know, Solomon, Rehoboam, and then Rehoboam and Jeroboam, that came after Solomon. But when Solomon was put in, praise God, amen, there were some things that began to happen. And when Solomon began, his desire was to build the temple, amen. God had already told David, your son's going to build the temple. He's building the temple, and guess what? There's a man by the name of Hiram and he is the king of Tyre and he begins to provide all of the trees gold amen copper amen whatever they needed for the building in fact he said I am so glad to see that God put his put put uh, David's son on the throne and with such wisdom. Now watch. I kept reading my Bible, amen, and I'm thinking, oh Hiram man, he's a Tyre, he's a king, amen. Man, God can even make the heathen bless him. But I kept reading, praise God, amen, in my Bible, and I found out that Hiram, amen, his, his father, amen, was a person of Tyre, but his mother was from the tribe of Naphtali. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And Hiram loved the things of God because mama had instilled in him the desire for God and the people of God. 
And so God, amen, saw this and says, amen, I'm going to let his mother bless him because I'm going to use Hiram to bless me. I'd never seen that before, but I just kept reading. I said, man, Hiram, you're not such a bad dude after all. You got a good mother. Didn't say anything about his father. Praise him. He was probably a good man. Praise the Lord. Amen. But I will tell you this. And Hiram was used of God. And Hiram's dad was used of God. In fact, it says Hiram's dad went to the temple. Listen to me. Where Solomon is constructing it. And Hiram's dad is the one, amen, that shaped and built those huge pillars, amen, out of bronze. Praise God, amen. He built those things were 30 feet tall. They were like 15 feet around, amen. He built both, two of them. One of them was called Joachim. The other one was called Boaz, amen. Praise the Lord. Has something to do with our entrance into the house of God. Now, I'm just trying to tell you because I didn't study it all out. But I will tell you this. It has to do with praise and it has to do with worship, praise the Lord. But God used somebody to help construct the house of God. That's what you're doing when you and I come to the house of the Lord. We're building a resume before the Lord. All right, come on musicians. Praise God. I'm almost done. Praise the Lord. But I say unto thee, I shall be more, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you because they wouldn't repent. And though the damnation of all that perish will be intolerable, yet the damnation of these who time after time resisted the gospel preached and they repented not, it will be even more intolerable for them. Now, I'm just trying to tell you, praise God, amen. There are some places, some churches, some towns that it seems that the gospel is more pronounced. I mean, you got to preach it. He preaches everything under the sun. He says, man, we're going to preach the whole counsel of God. We're going from Genesis all the way to Revelations. Now, we just pray they don't do it in one service. Amen. But we're constantly preaching and teaching the word of God. Now, hold on. He comes to the third city. This is where I'm going to close. He says, and thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. I thought about that. What does that mean, exalted to heaven? You have the best of preachers. You had all the miracles and the wonders, amen. You had the most, amen, praise God, amen. You were granted more than a lot of these other cities. You were exalted to the heavens above measure. You had privilege and opportunity above others. But because, amen, you would not repent and follow God, you shall be brought to hell. Above all the cities of Israel, this city enjoyed something that the others did not. Are you ready? They enjoyed the very residence of Jesus. This was Jesus' hometown after leaving Nazareth. This is where Jesus spent most of his time. Now hear me now. The city of Capernaum had such a great advantage over all the other cities. They heard the voice of Jesus on a regular basis. They saw the face of Jesus every day. He was with them day after day, night after night. He wasn't a stranger to him. And here, Capernaum, Christ's miracles and healings, they were daily bread. They saw miracle after miracle every day. They watched Jesus, amen, perform the wonders of God. And in all this, and with all this, amen, they still would not repent. And he says, for if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom. Notice now he goes from Tyre and Sidon. Now he goes even to the city of Sodom. Somebody say Sodom. We know about that city. We know about the wickedness, amen, of that city, amen. He says, but if the works that I did for you had been done in Sodom, Sodom would have remained this day. What an indictment, amen, against cities and against homes and against churches, amen. When God has done so much for us and we won't turn and follow him and we won't repent of our sins and we won't obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, amen. God says it's going to be more tolerable for Sodom than it will be for you. Why, amen, praise God. We know the sins of Sodom. Amen. I'm not here. I know I'm live streaming. Praise God. Amen. But their sins of lust and their inordinate affections of disobedience to the laws of God. Their sins, amen, were so depraved and perverted. Amen. And they were many. 
but the sin of all sins is rejecting Jesus Christ himself. Do you know why Israel is blinded today in part? Do you know why that Israel was scattered across the nations? Do you know why that Israeli men has suffered so much? You like, you, we talk about the Holocaust and all of the things that Israel's gone through. I'm going to sum it up for you. I'm closing. Get ready to sing. Amen. Praise God. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was, I'm sorry, John 1 and verse 10. He was in the world and the world was made by him. And without him, and the world was made by, by him. Verse 11. And he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Jesus was the greatest preacher in the world. And he had done so many miracles in their own hometown. And they would not follow him and rejected his word. Let's all stand. Amen. It's okay. Let's let's sing. Jesus rescued me. It'll be more tolerable for them or intolerable for them than Sodom. From the cold, dark Sodom had angels come to their city. Capernaum had the Lord come to their city. To neglect or reject the word of God is the worst thing that any city, any church, and any individual can do. Don't reject the word of God. He rescued me from the cold, dark water. What about this city? How many of them have rejected the word of God? Jesus Look at signs and wonders and miracles. There's been healings and blessings upon blessings. Do and many have walked I out and no longer to return. Jesus They've seen some of it and tasted of the power of the world to come. And he rescued me. Jesus rescued He's come tonight. Me. He's in this house. He the word of the Lord is in this place. Me the Spirit is speaking to the church. The Does anybody have an ear to hear what he's saying tonight? Oh, sins, troubled sin. Jesus rescued me. Such privileges have been offered. Such opportunities have been presented. But many fail. By rejecting the word of the Lord. By failing to repent. He rescued me. I cannot. Come on, church. We've seen the miraculous. We've experienced the supernatural here. I cannot. That pillar of cloud, amen, that guided them in the wilderness has been in this church. Has never failed me yet. Every promise he has kept, and I cannot fail the Lord. I cannot fail. Come on, don't reject his word. I cannot. Come on, repent tonight. Fail the Lord. He has never failed me yet. Every promise he has kept. And I cannot fail.
Come on, one more time. I cannot, cannot fail the Lord. I cannot fail the Lord. He has nailed He's never failed me, church. Never done that Every wrong. promise he has kept, and I cannot fail the Lord. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. He comes to every city. every church. He has spoken to the heart of every man. the greatest of preachers even with the greatest of blessings there are some people amen that will not return to him or turn to him and repent of their sins so let me close with this amen these three cities three woes amen praise God cities that Jesus visited preachers prophets evangelists visited disciples of the Lord miracles wonders healings now watch where is Chorazin? Where's Bethsaida? Where's Capernaum today? Did you know they don't even exist on the face of the map anymore? Because when you reject Jesus, amen, all is lost. With the passing of time, amen, the cities passed away. And the only thing that can be said about them is they rejected the greatest preacher known to mankind. Wow. Put your hands together. Let's clap. Under the